Today, we're sitting down with Garfield Robinson, VP Finance at Collective Arts, to learn about his journey moving from a larger organization to a medium-sized growth company. Garfield, I'm curious to learn about the skills and experiences you feel were highly relevant for this transition. Thanks for us, and thanks again for having me and for this opportunity um, to share with you guys. Um, going from a large organization to a small organization, for the most part, I think it relates to you know the individual. Um, you know the skills are most times transferable, so it comes down to the individual that you're dealing with and the situation you're going in. I think those two things will allow you to adapt as quickly as you can. In my instances, moving from Molson Coors um, Canada to Collective Arts, um, which is a much smaller organization, you know, I, I was able to draw on three particular skills that I think was, you know, very important that allowed me to be successful in in in, in those company. You know, the first skill was to my ability to have clarity of thought. So by clarity of thought. Um, this facilitated effective communication without distorting, you know, the, the noise of communication or distortion that tends to happen um, and that, you know, facilitate, you know, clarity with the, with the team. Two, um, organization agility to quickly organize the team and being able to pivot as priority changes because, you know, as a small organization, you know, we tend to have to be agile in order to be able to hit our numbers. And then thirdly, um, you know, to be able to ensure that, you know, we develop what I call the great mindset with individual um, can-do spirit and, and, and being able to have the ability to say, you know, regardless of what happened, we can make it happen. So I think those are the three factors that allow me to really adopt and, 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 and move forward from a Molson's, which was a much more well-oiled machine to a smaller company. So Garfield, uh, when you look back at it and, you know, um, as a new finance leader joining a um, new organization, um, integrating into the leadership team is so important. Um, you know, can you just describe to us a little bit about how you were able to integrate quickly into the existing leadership team at Collective Arts? Yeah, that, that's a very good question, actually. And um, it, it's pretty interesting because I joined during COVID and, you know, Onboarding during COVID, you know, not being able to go into the office, um, that was, was a challenge um, initially. But again, you know, from my perspective, one of the things I've always been able to do is to look ahead. So prior to even the start date, I started connecting with the executive leadership team, you know, keeping up to breast with what are some of the things was happening from a COVID perspective, what are some of the challenges they were having, and then being able to bring that perspective as I joined on the first day. I think critical though was about building trust. Um, what I find is that as you join a new organization and particularly in this instance, you have to be able to build trust with the team to ensure that you know you you walk the talk. So as individuals see you, you know you have to show them that you're willing to do what you say. And then also to not being afraid to be vulnerable at times because that will show them that you know what you're human and also at the same time that you're not afraid to, 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 to show them that you don't have any agenda and there's no risk. Um, so those are some of the things I use. So I would say the trust formula um, was a key part of you know, establishing credibility quickly with the collective arts team. I would love to spend a couple of minutes just uh, learning a little bit more about your journey uh, being a finance leader as it relates to diversity and inclusion. Um, yeah, that's an interesting question for an interesting time, but for sure. So my journey as a, as a finance leader um, in Canada, and I, I let me say that because you know, for the, for, the, for, the, for the record, you know, I came here from Jamaica, so my background is from Jamaica. I uh, came here 20 years ago, and um, for me, I, and on the first thing since I would say, you know, without on the positive side, diversity and inclusion allowed me to grow and and, and flourish here in Canada. Um, you know, off the jump, I, I got a job. I remember getting a job in one of the, the big five firms, and. You know, they kind of pretty much recruited me from Jamaica just based on the fact that I bring a, a lot of diversification to, you know, their business at the time. You know, they were just going into some software. I had that experience. I had the corporate experience because I'd left audit from way back in the 90s. And they were like, we need you. So so diversification have, have embraced me and allowed me to grow in, 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 in a lot of ways. Having said that, though, I do see where it also hampered 
And if you bring it back to what's happening in today's world, you know, it, it, it is really, um, you know, I, I would say it's a delicate balance and something that I would like to be to address a lot more. You know, the one thing I would like to see happen and, you know, the dial change going forward is more people to embrace diversification and more importantly, the unconscious bias towards what I would say minorities um, within Canada and the corporate world. Garfield, thank you so much for joining us today to discuss your journey moving from large multinational organizations to more of a medium-sized growth company.